Hello and welcome to another day of Advent of Code. This one is day 11 and we've got a bunch of flashing octopuses today. Uh, octopodes, octopi, I don't know, whatever it is. <laughs> Let's jump into it. Okay, so our input is going to look like a series of numbers here and they basically represent a bunch of oct octopuses? That's what I'm going with, octopuses. Um, and for part one, we are going to do 100 phases. And what a phase is, uh, what a phase starts with is incrementing each number by one uh, bumping these all up, and if they achieve a number that's greater than nine, they will do a flash. What a flash does is it causes all of the octopuses around it to also increment by one, which may cause them to flash, et cetera, et cetera. It may cause a chain reaction. And for part one, we're going to do that 100 times and count how many times they flash. Um, so let's get started with that. So for this, what I'm going to do is represent everything on a coordinate plane. And I'm just going to use a simple map for this. Uh, in the past, I've used a, you know, a, a default dict or um, or a counter. But in this case, we can just use a map since we're always dealing with a constant number of things. And uh, I'm just going to use the keys as the coordinate pair uh, for y line in enumerate input s dot split lines or x c in enumerate line. Very similar to what we did in the past. Chords x, y equals int c. So that's this is all we need to do for the parsing part. That'll get us a, a nice little coordinate pair. And for part one, we need to do 100 phases. So we can just start by making a uh, loop here. And the first thing that we're going to do is increment all of them by one. So we can do that by doing 4k uh, v in chords items, chords k plus equals one. Uh, now, what you could do is just continue onwards and look at every single thing to find the ones that are greater than nine. Um, it's going to be much faster to just record them as you increment them. So if we um, keep track of what we needed to do, if chords k is greater than nine, then we know we need to handle that um, octopus later. So we'll do to do dot append k. Once we have incremented them all, we are going to have a list of things that would need to flash. And so we're going to handle those. So while to do, and this is going to be, you know, another depth first search. So if you saw that in the other problem, we're going to follow basically that same pattern here. Uh, point equals to do dot pop. We're going to mark things that have already flashed with a zero. So I want to check here whether this is already flashed because other it, it's possible that this could have gotten added earlier in this through recursion and maybe, you know, we just need to cancel it here. So if chords point is equal to zero, then we'll just continue. Don't need to flash that there. Uh, but now we know that we're flashing, so we need to set chords point to zero chords. And we need to record the number of flashes. Flashes equals zero. So we're going to increment that by one. Flashes plus equals one. Uh, and now we need to increment everything around us, including the diagonals. So for that, I'm going to write a little function. I'm typing import generator. Uh, adjacent x int y int. It's going to give us a generator of tuple int int which means I also need to do this. Next year, oh no, probably not. Even then, it probably still will. I was gonna say next year, I won't need to do that, but probably only gonna be Python 3.10 by that point, so still I will need it. For xd in negative one, zero, one, or yd in negative one, zero, one, basically just making a double loop to get the differences around each of them. Um, and if x d equals y d equals zero, so we want to we don't want to double count ourselves. We're just going to skip that. Otherwise, we yield x plus x d and y plus y d. So this will give us all of the points adjacent to our current point. We can do for other in adjacent. I'm going to do star p t here. Uh, I actually kept x and y as a single tuple there. You could split it out. You could do it either way if you want. Um, and we want to check this. So we want to say if other is in chords, this is our bounds check. So in the other one, we got around by bounds checking because we we're okay with a default value. Here, we actually care about staying in bounds um, because we're continually modifying stuff. So we have to do this check here. 
if other in chords and chords other does not equal zero, so we don't want to increment a thing that's already already flashed, then we'll do chords other plus equals one. And again, we need to check if we've bumped it past nine and add it back to our to-do. If chords other is greater than nine, then to do dot append other. And I think that's basically it. So this is gonna go through all of that and part one flashes, flashes. That's just gonna run all of those. Let's see what we've got so far, 1656, and that is what we expect. Cool, so that's what we get for part one. Part two asks us, uh, eventually they will all flash at the same time. What cycle is that? So for this, we need to adjust our loop a little bit. We no longer care about this flashes count. So I'm going to get rid of that. And we basically want to continually loop until they have all flashed. So instead of looping exactly 100 times, we're going to do while true. And I'm actually just going to put this in a function because that way I can stop it all easily. <laughs> And step equals zero, step plus equals one. And the way we can check if they've all flashed is after we've done this flash processing, we can check if every single value inside of our coordinates is, um, is zero. Um, actually, we don't need a loop because we can just do break. Never mind, it's easier than I thought. <laughs> so we can say if all val equals zero for val in values. This means they have all flashed. Then we can break. And then part two, we get uh, the step count. And so if we run part two, uh, we get 195. Cool. Anyway, that's how I would handle this for today's problem. Um, little generator helper, store the coordinates, parsing, and then do this. Uh, there's a lot of tricky stuff here that I kind of glossed over. I got super stuck on this when I implemented my problem. I also had a tiny mistake up here, but if you're careful, then you can solve this pretty well. And this is a depth first search. It also works with a breadth first search, so you can use either search type that you want there. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful, and I will see you around for the next day.